Hello, everyone. You're listening to Digital Builder, a podcast brought to you by Autodesk, made for construction professionals who want to hear from those on the forefront of construction technology. If you're looking for conversations centered around where the industry is going, this podcast is for you. Each episode will feature a conversation with a construction industry leader. Together, we'll dig in on themes related to connected construction and discuss where the future of the construction industry is headed. Now let's get started. All right, everyone. Welcome to the first episode of Digital Builder. I'm your host, Eric Thomas. Now, I have to tell you, I'm very excited to kick this project off. After spending a number of years working for different general contractors across the world, I've jumped on the construction technology boat and am now fortunate to be an industry marketing manager here at Autodesk. My experiences have sparked a passion in exploring where this industry is headed, and this podcast will let others with that same passion share their insights. But enough about me. Let's get into today's episode. This week's guests are Allison Scott, who is the Director of Construction Thought Leadership and Customer Marketing at Autodesk, and Cliff Cole, who is the Director of Virtual Design and Construction at Penta Group. Allie, let's start with you. Can you tell me a bit about your background? Sure. And thanks, Eric. It's really exciting to be here. You know, I came to Autodesk about two years ago after spending a little over 13 years in the AEC and technology industries. So I've always had a big passion for the intersection of design and construction and technology. And in my time in the industry, I spent a lot of time investigating and integrating new technologies and new ways of working and innovative solutions into the way that architects and contractors work on a day-to-day basis. So now coming over to Autodesk, I really enjoyed the process of not just focusing on one company, but having the honor and ability to focus on an industry. And so I really, you know, it's been an honor and a pleasure to to be here at Autodesk, especially since we've made such big investments in construction. And yeah, so getting to work with folks like you, getting to work with folks like Cliff is just been super exciting. And here I am. So Cliff, over to you. (laughs) Yeah, Cliff, can you tell us a little bit about working at Penta Building Group? Yeah, Eric, I Thank you again for having me on the podcast. I'm excited. So my name is Clifton Cole. I'm with the Penta Building Group. We're based a general contractor based out of Las Vegas. We're offices in Arizona and in Southern California. I've been in the industry for probably about 16 years now. And I originally from the East Coast and migrated West to get away from the snow <laughs> and the cold. Oh, <laughs> right to my heart, Cliff. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I did the same thing myself coming from Michigan, so I understand. He understands. So, but yeah, it's, it's, it's been an exciting ride. I started out as a project engineer working out, out on, the, in, on the job site and loved working with the trade people and the designers and, and almost like Ali said, kind of having that mixture that blend of design and construction and then be able to work with different clients which has been a great experience and then one day i was asked to you know check out this new software called revit because they're looking to Mm -hmm. integrate into the company and so it kind of just my the role in vdc kind of took off from there and you know 10 years later we have a six person department and we're implementing all kinds of technology throughout the company That's awesome, Cliff. Thank you for sharing a little bit, and Allie as well. So let's jump straight into the show here. For the first half, we're going to be discussing Autodesk University, which kicks off in North America on November 17th, and in Europe, EMEA and APAC on November 18th. This year, we've gone fully digital, like many other events across the world, due to the ongoing pandemic. For the second half of the show, we'll be discussing the importance of diversity in the construction industry. With that said, let's jump in. So I'm told attendees can expect a lot of exciting stuff this year. Ali, can you tell us a little bit about Autodesk University and why our listeners should be excited about an all digital AU? Yeah, definitely, Eric, and thank you. It's a really, it's been an interesting experience. You know, AU, Autodesk University is a global event. And for the first year, we're bringing that community, that expertise, that energy, and that, you know, sense of learning to a digital environment. And it's kind of, it's been a challenge. I'm not going to lie, you know, and it's really hard to replicate the experience that you have with an in-person event. I mean, Cliff, you and I were talking about this, you know, just recently. It's, I think I've been to seven AUs in the past. And I have very distinct memories of what that feeling is like. But the good news is, is that there are amazing people here at Autodesk who have been working around the clock to create an experience that's going to be positive, impactful, and memorable, even though we can't be in person. So the lineup this year is looking pretty exciting. We've got amazing keynotes that are going to start on November 17th. And we're going to kick everything off with our general session with Andrew, who's going to demonstrate how we and our customers across the industry are truly reimagined 
imagining what is possible. So that day one programming, as you said, Eric's going to start at 9 a.m. Pacific time on November 17th. It will be streamed. So you don't want to miss it. It's going to be some really cool insights and announcements that are going to be shared. And then right after Andrew is all of the industry keynotes, you know, so architecture, engineering, and construction keynote is going to follow immediately after. It's a great place to learn about the latest insights from Autodesk and all of the work that we and some of our customers have been doing in, in this past year. But in addition to all those streamed keynotes that, you know, I always look forward to every year at every Autodesk, we have over 750 on-demand classes this year. We've got live panels, we've got discussion roundtables, and it's going to be, it's going to be incredible. And one of the nice things that we've done this year that you'll find is that we've organized around industry. So if you are a architect or you are a contractor and you're looking to find the classes that matter to you, you're going to have a special construction destination page that you'll be able to see and surface up all the interesting things that are directly related to you and your industry. So the other thing about this year too, is that we haven't just been focusing on our flagship event and typically, which is typically happens in, in the U S in Las Vegas, but we've also been focusing on the global experience. And, and that's, what's interesting and a little bit different this year is that, you know, think of all of the AUs that we have around the world. We have London, we've got experiences in the Netherlands, in, in APAC, and all of those events are now kind of combined into this one, one experience on AU 2020 this year online. So we have not just content in English, we have content in seven languages this year. So it's pretty incredible. It's been a huge lift for everybody in a very short period of time, but I'm, I'm really, really excited. So, and then some fun things outside of class classes and that on-demand learning content is we'll have spotlights on the finalists and winners of the Autodesk AEC Excellence Awards, which I'm really excited about. We have some amazing on-demand customer documentaries. We've actually have spent a lot of time working with some select projects around the world, going deep on how, you know, contractors around the world are really reimagining the way that they work on these iconic projects. But we also have some live meetups and we have Answer Bar, all the things you would typically expect. We have an expo online. It sounds kind of daunting and it sounds like a lot, but I'm really excited for people to register and, you know, just go on this journey with us on an online way. So that's it. That's, I think that's, I, I could go on and on, but that's, I think that's enough for now. <laughs> Thanks, Eric. Yeah, no problem. It's it's exciting to hear all this come together. I've only yeah. had the pleasure of experiencing one AU to date. And even though we're digital this year, I'm still very excited to see what shapes up and there's going to be a lot of great sessions, including Cliff's. So yeah, definitely. Be... Mm -hmm. So as Ali just shared, this year's AU theme is reimagine what's possible. Cliff, I know we were talking about this a couple of days ago. And so I was hoping you could share this a little bit with us, but how does that theme show up on the job site for you? Mm -hmm. Well, I have to really think about this, and, and I am excited uh, about the top of the theme. Um, I'm excited about the future of our industry. When I, I look at it, and I really break it down, especially from my perspective being in virtual design and construction. There's kind of really four major areas that we focus on. Um, obviously, technology is one of them. The product delivery method is definitely one of them. That really impacts how we deliver work, how we collaborate with other team members. Our lead perspective, you know, I, I'm in constant and continuous improvement is something that we're, yeah. we're constantly looking at especially when we're trying to integrate change from new technology and, and new processes. And the fourth one, which is something we kind of done before, but it's really kind of, there's a focus on it now is diversity, not in diversity in trade contractors, diversity in materials, diversity in, and and, and just people on the job site. So for me, I'm, I'm reimagining the, the impossible is almost like a daily, <laughs> daily thing that I do. It's it's always trying to you know think outside the box, you know, challenging status quo. I mean. With the new technology, we're looking at, I mean, we're trying to be more consistent with getting drones on job sites or virtual reality and, and predictive analytics, connected construction, because, you know, as, as we all dealt with in the industry, you know, communication is one of the biggest struggles we have, you know, a lack of communication or just inefficient communication, information is critical to our success as a builder to make sure we understand the design intent and we make sure we understand the owner's program and what they're trying to accomplish and all this information and before you know it, you, it would be uh you know this is obviously maybe a little bit before my time but they would fax information and or stuff will be sitting in you know file cabinets and now we're kind of in it we're we've are we're engulfed in this digital <laughs> digital yeah. age right now but our processes haven't really caught up to the technology it hasn't caught up to the advancements we're making in the industry 
So for me, again, I think reimagining what's possible is probably the one of the most exciting parts of my job because it's the the future definitely ahead of us. I was talking to somebody the other day. We have four generations in one office. I mean, we have people that are in ready to retire in their 70s, and we have interns that are in high school. And, and, and so you, you just have a, a wide variety of different people, diverse people that, that all have different thoughts and opinions. And for us, you know, to be, you know, what we, one of our, our mission statement is being a premier builder. So for us, you know, how do we accomplish that? And it's, and it's challenging way we've done things, challenging how we can improve safety and challenging how we can improve quality. I mean, it's, I can, I can go on for, <laughs> for a while, but it's just so everything we do and everything that we need to do needs to be focused around reimagining what's possible. So for me, I'm, I'm excited to hear, I mean, some of the new advancements with the, with ACC and, 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 and BIM 360. And I mean, the technology is really just has a meaning today and, you know, getting a group to, uh, together, you know, designers and contractors and really working through how we're going to communicate with each other, how we're going to do updates, how we're going to identify changes. I mean, technology is now is there. We know we're not hindered by the technology. It's really making sure we can communicate with each other, collaborate with each other, kind of break those silos, those data silos down, those communication silos down, and they really all ultimately get to the end goal, which uh, for us as a contractor is the build, but obviously as a team is to provide the client what, you know, the difference that that it's going to change the industry or change their change their community um, or, or change their city. So I'm excited uh, about the theme for AU this year. I'm looking forward to all of the keynotes and all of the presentations out there um, because there's some really talented people that are really pushing the limits. And you know, it's funny people that I don't even know or don't even we don't even communicate with. I think we challenge each other. I, I mean, I see some you know blog posts and, and LinkedIn stories and just you know stuff that other people are doing. I'm like, man, how do we get there? How do we do that? You know, they that's that's really cool what they're working on and, and some of the success that we're seeing. And that's why I think, you know, part of it for me, AU is so exciting because you get to ask the question, like, hey, you know, how did you, how did you get to where you are? And what, what struggles did you have? And, and what, what, what obstacles do I, I want to encounter? So for me, the, uh, the, the theme is, is perfectly said, and I think it's going to be exciting. Cliff, I love hearing that and in the enthusiasm that you have there. And honestly, I think that's one of my favorite things about actually getting to attend AU is to run across people like yourself. I had the pl totally. uh, pleasure of talking to you last year. And like even in my experience in the industry, I've, I've been in here eight or 10 years now. Like I just remember submitting federal proposals of 15 to 20 <laughs> binders worth of paper and people were flying across the country to hand deliver these things. Yeah. And it was a crisis every time. And now we're pivoting to these all digital, opportunities and not all contractors, not all clients are, you know, completely on board, but it's been really exciting to see how quickly the industry has changed. And, and I think it's driven by people like you who have the enthusiasm that you have. I totally agree, Eric. Like, I love what you said too, Cliff, about how, you know, those moments in time when you are running into somebody on the hallway and, you know, you're uncovering what's possible together is, is, is something, you know, it's hard to recreate that, but I think you also hinted at something that's happening on the job site, which is that, you know, you're dealing with problems and every single day that is your job. Right. And, and we we've known this now from experience that contractors are some of the most creative and the most, you know, unique problem solvers in the world. Like they really are. And I think we also saw that with COVID right there. We have all reimagined what is possible, even in light of something that is so devastating and so, you know, just nerve wracking like COVID, like which literally put job sites to a halt. So I've seen a couple of commentaries like just over LinkedIn and in other communities that I'm in with other construction professionals, where I think this year's theme for AU is like so indicative of what we've all been like leave, living with, like literally. And we've all been reimagining what it means to come together. We've all been reimagining what it means to work remotely. And we've all reimagined what it means to keep a job site alive, even despite all of these hurdles and challenges. So thank you so much for your feedback and thoughts there. I'm excited too. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that's great. So now that our listeners have some reasons to be really excited about AU in 2020, make sure you go out and register for free online. And you can do that by going to autodesk.com slash autodesk dash university. It's a hyphen between Autodesk and university. So Ali, since you're one of our keynote speakers in construction, can you share with our listeners how they can learn more about your session? 
Yeah, absolutely. So there's going to be an amazing selection of content and classes available, keynotes, plenaries. I have the very you know wonderful honor of representing construction in a plenary about Forge. And myself and the director of strategy and marketing for Forge, Ron Lachlan, get to have a great discussion about sort of the power of Forge that's being used in construction today, along with some of our key ecosystem integration partners and some of our key industry customers. So one of the best things to do for finding sessions that you're interested or plenaries that you're interested in, in, in watching is to go to the Autodesk University website, go ahead and just register. It's free. It's not something you're going to want to miss. So go register now and then go take a look at the session website where the session tab on the website, and you can start to search by topic, by keyword, by name, by company. There's a whole, it basically it's got a great search functionality and you can start to kind of digest some of the classes and sessions that are going to be available. And then in a couple of weeks, three through the registration portal, you'll be able to actually bookmark those classes. So then you can go back and reference them and watch them on demand once they become available the week of AU. Awesome. So that's for everybody listening, that's the best way to go out and find yeah. both Ali's keynote and then Cliff session as well, which we're going to be talking a little bit more about here in depth as, uh, as we kind of continue on through the podcast. Definitely. So with that said, Ali, I'd like to hear a bit more about how the new AU format might actually reach a more diverse group of people than we've been able to engage with in the past. That's a, such a great question, Eric, because, you know, as I said before, I had a very distinct honor of attending AU a number of times as a customer, right, when I was in the industry, as well as now having been a member of Autodesk. And it's an investment. <laughs> it's not, it's it's something that takes a lot of time, resources, funding to make happen. And this year, for the first time, we, since we're going digital, you know, the Autodesk organization made a decision to make it free so that we could go deeper and wider than we've ever been before. So basically anyone and everyone can attend and folks that may not have typically been given an opportunity to do so. So, you know, I think of folks like the pre-construction department, the safety department, those that are out on the field, those are out on job sites. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to spend eight hours a day locked into your computer watching a class, but you might find two, three, four, five that, you know what, you want to bookmark and you want to go back and you want to watch it. So that's one of the things I'm really excited about is that the general supers who are champions on our job sites that are really interested in what new technology is going to help make them better at their jobs and help others across the way, across all of their stakeholders and their supply chain. We've got classes for you. We've got classes for the estimating crowd. We've got classes for the bidders, for the procurement team, for the quality safety teams, for the business development and marketing teams. It's like, it's a laundry list for the first time ever. And it's, it's really, really exciting. It also opens up the door for one of the first times to really deepen the availability of content for students, professors, and hobbyists. So if you are a student or you have any interest whatsoever in this industry, this is the first time you're going to see all the same content that will have been delivered live in person. So absolutely register, absolutely sign up. And that that just creates this groundswell of new people, I think, that we have an opportunity to, to reach than, than ever before. And that's one of the things that Cliff and I have talked about in the past. It's like, we can't just expect that the, the next generation of an architect, or the next generation of a contractor or a construction technologist is going to come out of the typical way that we have encouraged, you know, people joining this industry in the past. And I am really excited to really, you know, encourage a more diverse industry by giving more access to this kind of content and education. And, and this is, this is one, one tiny little spark of how it starts. Yeah, I think that's my favorite part coming out of this is just that yeah. that reach that we have right now is, yeah. is something unprecedented and like pulling those positive things out of, you know, a, a challenging situation across the globe is is one of those small things that I'm thankful for right now. So as, as you can see, we've, we've shifted direction here a little bit and focused on a topic that both of our guests are actually very passionate about, which is diversity in construction. So as I mentioned earlier, Cliff's presentation is actually all about diversity in our industry. And it's a topic that I've heard Ali talk about about numerous times since I actually joined the Autodesk organization almost two years ago. So Cliff, I know we mentioned earlier that your AU session is focused on diversity. Can you tell me a little bit more about what sparked your passion for this topic and what listeners might get from attending your session? 
Yeah, definitely. So it's a, I'm excited. This is my second year presenting at AU. Definitely want to give a quick shout out to, it was initially the playing grid. I think it's now called the Autodesk Champions Programs. Uh, mm-hmm. um, um, so it's been a great experience um, working with the team over there. So the top, the session is called Blacks and Minorities in AEC, Perspectives on Diversity and Inclusion. And so for me, you know, we, we just, well, I had a company diversity meeting today and, and, and the question was asking, you know, you know how did you get involved? And for me, it's, I've been passionate about this ever since I started in the industry. I've been passionate about this ever since I, you know, you know went to college. Uh, I mean, this is, I live a diverse life every single day. So, you know, it, it was it's something I've always been passionate about. But I think this year has been unique. Uh, honestly, we're in the midst of a global pandemic, I think that a lot of people are still working from home or in, at their house. And, and between you know the news and social media, I think there's a lot that's been going on and in, in, in not just nationally in, in our country, but in the world as well. And so for me, it's, it's, you know, just talking to different individuals and talking to people and, you know, even, you know, coworkers, friends, family, you know, at, at one point I consistently heard that people are just tired, tired of talking about all the stuff that's going on in the world, all the struggles that people are having, you know, I mean, between systematic racism, I mean, there's, there's, there's mental health issues. I mean, there's just, you know, at the health of it, just the physical health of people and, and people were just tired. And so I felt like, you know, I, I just had a calling to just kind of step up, you know, I mean, from my mind, and you can talk about it, you can be about it, you can sit on the sideline and complain about it, or you can jump out and, you know, into the action and do something. So uh, I just w- reached out and, and to, and I was having a conversation with some coworkers and I just, you know, uh, and, and some college friends. And I just felt like, you know, let me, let me see about putting this presentation together. <laughs> Didn't have a clue how it really was going to work. Uh, it's, we're putting the final touches on it right now. And, and I'm just ecstatic. So I was able to, you know, persuade forward individuals. Um, I want to give them a shout out as well. Vincent Spencer is an associate principal architect at LS3P Associates in Charlotte. Dwayne Sellers, he's a senior VDC manager at WM Jordan. Kim Bates, she's a VP and CIO at WebCore. And Lauren Blair, who is a account a technical solutions manager at Autodesk. So these four individuals have been grateful to join me in this journey. We pulled together a kind of a presentation slash interview session. It's a very engaging. It's very exciting. You know, it's there's a lot of passion and there's a lot of insights from different people that have different perspectives from different career developments, um, different parts of the country. And so I'm excited. Uh, I'm excited to be able to present this presentation to the Autodesk community. Uh, I'm excited to be able to have the live Q&A session as well, to be able to answer any questions and, and hope, hopefully engage in conversation. You know, our company here at Pittsburgh Building Group has done a lot with diversity, gender, uh, race, religion, sexuality, and, and really kind of making sure that we are doing what we're supposed to be doing. Uh, we have yeah. a lot of passionate people. It starts with the top, our president and our executive committee, and, and it's being pushed, not even pushed down, but it's being encouraged throughout the company. And, and then a lot of the people that want to engage in the conversation, but sometimes it's scary because you don't know what you can or cannot say. You don't know how people are going to take it. You don't know, you know, other people's perspectives. You, you know, we work together, but, you know, we didn't, we haven't seen each other for the course of our life. So um, what we want to encourage is we want to bring awareness. We want to bring awareness to with the issues people are talking about and want to deal with. When we want to, but we also want to do it in a environment where it's comfortable, comfortable enough to where you're not going to get ridiculed <laughs> or, or anything like that. So for having an opinion or being, you know, not knowledgeable about certain, certain things. I mean, you know, that one of the key factors for me was just, we have to engage in conversation. And if we're not being, we're not open and divert diverse way, right? It's not just about gender or about race. It's about all people, you know, and treating all people equally, you know, in my career, there's been so many times, unfortunately, where I felt, you know, I was singled out, not because I wasn't doing a good job or I wasn't um, producing the work that I was supposed to, just purely because of the color of my skin, or you felt belittled or you felt isolated, right, because of that. And, uh, and you know, wow, for me, I just, you know, you had to kind of work through that. Uh, and I look at it now, I, I don't want anybody else to feel that way yeah. just because of their gender, just because of their race. At the end of the day, we're in a business, whether it's architecture, engineering, construction, whatever industry you're in, we're here as a team. We want to be able to produce the best work product we possibly can for our clients and for our team members. So for me, I have a lot of passion about it. I, I, uh, I, I get I get excited. I get, I get emotional. I get, you know, but I get, I'm, I'm also encouraged. I'm encouraged 
that we've made a lot of progress and, you know, but I think we still have a long way to go. So the hope is that this presentation will continue the conversation that other people have started and, and, can, and can bring light to some of the situations that are out there and bring different perspectives. And then big, again, it shouldn't stop with just this presentation. We got to figure out how to make sure we continue these conversations along with everything else that we talked about, you know, with technology and in the industry. So yes, I'm excited. I, I hope everybody enjoys it. You know, I'm, I'm, I love feedback and love different thoughts and perspectives. So, and I, and, I, and I think that the other four speakers have the same passion and excitement. So uh, we are all uh, happy uh, to be able to provide this to the Autodesk community. Cliff, that's, that's awesome. Cliff. That's awesome. <laughs> I, I just, I appreciate the perspective from my seats that like both yourself and Allie really bring to these conversations. So thank you so much for, for sharing that. You know, what I love though, about what you said, Cliff, is that, I mean, you're really shining a light on hard topics, right? And this is, this are, and I just appreciate, you know, your courage and the, the, the authenticity that you and your colleagues are bringing to this conversation. And I think that's also one of the lesser known things about Autodesk University is that we're not just focused on a super user, you know, high tech, you know, type of lab like conversation or lab based content or classes. It's we actually have programs that where we're trying to up level the conversation in our entire industry. We have classes around strategy, we have classes around how to make your innovation program, you know, the, to you know, bring it to the next level. But we also have classes about how do we advance this industry because culture and diversity and inclusion and equity. We cannot take and utilize technology as an enabler to change our industry if we do not have those things lined up in the right way, right? And, and you are so right that this is just, you know, one of the first ways you can start is by watching your content, diving into the other class content we have around advancing the industry and, you know, taking those lessons and starting to digest it and bring it into your own company, right? So yeah, I'm I'm really? yeah, I'm really, really excited that we're, we have you joining Autodesk University again this year. Awesome. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Ali, for sharing that too. That's yeah. uh, it's really important to consider as we kind of continue talking about this topic. Anyway, Ali, could you share a little bit about what you consider some of the common blockers our industry is facing when it comes to diversity and inclusion in the workplace? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot. <laughs> but I think, you know, one of the things that I was thinking about, Cliff, when you were kind of sharing your perspective about why you brought this AU class to light is there's a really important thing around making these conversations visible, right? And I've heard other people in this industry talk about this. It's like, if we don't see, you know, people of color in leadership roles, if we don't see women on the job site, if we don't see, you know, conversations and collaboration happening with respect and equity, then we don't know that it's possible. So how would I ever be able to tell, you know, a young person, especially a, a young person of color, that there is an opportunity for them in construction, in technology, if they don't have role models to look to. So, it, you know, one of the things that I consider, you know, my responsibility at Autodesk is to create those moments, is to lift those conversations up where we do demonstrate that this is this is an amazing industry. You have a role here, you have a place here, and we need you. So creating that moment of visibility and awareness is just so important. And it goes, that that's not just as an in, at the industry level, it is very big at the industry level, but it's also at your company, right? So at the company, what, you know, there are things that if you are a leader of a construction firm, it's your responsibility to find ways to create that visibility and to lift lift up people with, with more diverse backgrounds, of, with more diverse ethnicity, so that you do create more equity across your organization. So there's a lot of others, I'm sure, as well around around blockers, but that's just, that's one to me that just, you know, kind of just comes to mind um, in this conversation. Yeah, can I add to that real fast? I yeah, think please. that please. Ali hit it right on the head. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's funny, we talk about it from an organizational standpoint. Yeah. And at some point, I also felt like it was an individual standpoint, you know, as, as individuals, the companies can do but so much. They, they can, you know, allow the conversations to happen, they can encourage the conversation to happen. But the individuals have to really take the stand or take the, the initiative on what they want to do. So, and, and for and one of the things that we talked about, especially in our company and, and specifically in our VDC department is how do we get back into the community? You know, we have an opportunity Definitely. to be able to mentor like you like to talk about how do you how do you rise to that level if you've never seen somebody look like you being in that, in that position so you know we thought we we we, 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 the, we deal with the ace program that goes into high schools you know i, I reached out to i've reached out to teachers in the past and got into the middle schools and the elementary schools and you know you know starting young just thing to encourage 
these kids that are just full of energy and excitement that, hey, there's an opportunity out there. You know, you don't have to just be a, a doctor or a lawyer <laughs> or, or a firefighter or a policeman, which they're all great impressions in industries. But hey, also don't don't uh, dismiss the you know, architecture and the engineering and the construction. And, and this is what it looks like and this is what it could be. So I think that it's, you know, for me, to get into the community, um, especially, you know, where you live or, or where you're from and, and make sure we, we get back there as well. Now, Cliff, that's great. And I think it leads into my next question, actually, which is regarding mentorship in this industry. Do you have any insight or thoughts on how you can, how, how others in positions of authority and leadership and everything can mentor others building diverse organizations? And, and then just what the average person can do to really support a more diverse workforce in the industry? Uh, yeah, it's a, <laughs> it's a, it's a, a lot, uh, you know, but the, the question is, is, is really relevant. So I, I guess for me, you know, to, to break it down, you know, mentorship, you know, you know, we're at Penta, I guess the best way I can put it, at Penta, we are, our diversity pr- uh, initiative started out with just trying to figure out what it actually meant and how it's important to our particular company. But, you know, th- which would then ultimately allow me to really start doing some research and kind of like broaden my perspective on what, what does diversity and inclusion uh, actually mean? And we obviously, then we added equity to make sure that, because that whole, it, all three have to be together for us, us to, I think, continue to grow. But I, I wanted to just throw out our, our diversity committee statement to help answer that question, Eric. As in, it, it, we mentioned that Penta is committed to promoting diversity in our workforce through inclusion and awareness, incorporating different ideas, perspectives, and backgrounds to drive innovation and growth. And I wanted to kind of lay that out because that's helped set the stage for what we're trying to accomplish, uh, at least explicitly here at, at Penta. But the drive innovation and growth, right? And we, we've gone through the diversity inclusion partly because it's the right thing to do, but there's truly a business case <laughs> for, what, for what we're trying to accomplish as, as well. And it, it centers around items like recruiting, you know, uh, attracting, retaining, recruiting talent, right? Where, you know, where there's been, there's so many publications and information out there about the labor shirts we're dealing with in the industry. Right? And then, so for us, we have to figure out how to diversify the, the pool of, of talent that we're looking at to be able to fight these labor shortages. Um, but at the same time that, you know, there are people that are leaving the industry, you know, women and minorities, but for various different reasons, how do we retain that talent that we already have? We talked about before the innovation and performance, right? We, you know, I feel like, you know, every contract that I look at that is in going down the BIM VDC route, you know, I, they are, we are pushing each other to make yeah. this industry better. We have, you know, Autodesk is pushing the industry to be better. So the innovation is not just centered to my, my mind, our company, it's, it's, we're all pushing to be better. So I think that's, that's part of it. The reputation and responsibilities. I mean, I was reading an article the other day about, you know, the different, the millennial generation, how, how much they take into consideration diversity when you're looking at, you know, which company they want to based on the culture of the company. And it's not just centered around money or benefits like that. They, they're it's looking at you know a broader perspective on, on what companies they want to join when when they're either graduating college or moving or looking at different positions. Then there is there there is actual you know statistics. Uh, you know there's so many publications out there, <laughs> but the financial benefit of, of diversity and inclusion why is important. So with all that being said, you know we we've talked about the mentorship portion of it, and it's and it's uh, again going back to you know especially I remember growing up as a, as a young child and and wanting to emulate you know my my cousins you know they you know I didn't have any brothers like my cousins. I want to be like my father. I want to be like my mother. I want to be like on TV that I saw there were just doing amazing things. I want to be like Michael Jordan because he could jump really high, right? So, you, yeah. you know, that perspective from when I was a young child, I'm, I'm looking at that and saying, okay, this, what can I do? So for me, mentoring is so important because it, it really sets the path potentially for that individual at whatever age or whatever stage they're at in their life to help become the person that they can be. And I think a lot of times we just need your support. You know, it's hard. It's funny. It's a, I, I remember a story that somebody said is, you know, a woman in construction, is, how do they, how do they be, how are they mentored by a superintendent that's a man when yeah. that man does not understand what that woman is going through, <laughs> right? So, you know, for me, it's, it's, it's you know, you have to, it's, it's, you have to be diverse in your mentorship. You can't just have one type or the other. And I think, that, again, for me, diversity is more than just gender, race. It basically covers every aspect of every single industry. And, and for us, if you are siloed to one perspective or one way, you, there is no growth, right? And we talked about in our mission statement, innovation and growth and really kind of hit that hard and so for and again ultimately in the day but you know we're we're in the business to make money too so <laughs> as a, as a, it's a construction company and, and you know provide the clients the clients 
uh, their, the facilities and buildings that they are looking to, uh, to grow their business as well. So for us, you know, it, it's really talking, thinking about asking the question. I think a lot of times, I mean, we, I've been in, involved in so many engaging conversations. It's opening my eyes and getting different perspectives, but all, has also opened up everybody else's eyes that I've talked to. Um, and again, it's from everybody from the, the president down to, to the to labor on the job site. So, and they all want to engage because they all want to be better. They all want to be achieve certain goals. So I think that, you know, with everything that we're talking about, I think it really comes back down to there's a human factor. You know, we got to care about each other as people. And, and for me, the, the best mentors I've had in my life, not even just career, my life, have just cared about me as a person. They, they, they've taken the time out of their schedule, out of their day to sit there and ask a certain question like, how are you doing? How are you feeling? And that's where, you know, we got to get back to that com- that compassion, that, that empathy and that love for each other and to help grow this industry so we can be more profitable, so we can retain the talent, so we can push the limits on technology and, and innovation. So again, I'm, I am just passionate about this topic. And, and I think for, for me, it's, it's making sure that we, you know, engage in conversations like we're having right now, engage in presentations, engage in, you know, writing blogs and stuff like that to help continue this, this uh, conversation and making sure we're a better industry at the end of the day. So Cliff, I could ask you and Ali <laughs> 200 more questions on this topic because I just, the passion that you both have and, and the wealth of knowledge is very expansive, but unfortunately we're, we're going to have to pivot towards the tail end of our show. So I want to make sure everybody knows that Cliff's session is going to be special because he'll be running a live Q&A at the end of the presentation. Is there anything you'd like to share about your session or the live Q&A and what that might mean for their listeners? Yeah, I, I would try to keep it short. The, the, the session, I think, it, it's really, it's really fun. It, it's been, it's been a great proportive thing it together. So, you know, and, and obviously this is new because we're all virtual now, <laughs> but the way the session is going to happen, we're going to, um, it's a 45 minute video, pre-recorded video of interviews and kind of intro ring-ins. And then where we want the, all four co-speakers will be available, including myself, to be able to ask questions. And so the excitement is that I think that you have a very diverse group of people that uh, have different perspectives and, and, and we're all really open to having a conversation and we haven't we haven't there hasn't been any hiding from any questions or cha- you know or taking on the challenging questions so for me yeah i think that this is that's what makes this session so special that you know the uncut and you know raw passion and excitement and energy from from uh, each uh, co-speaker so i'm looking forward for, to everybody uh, you're, you know can make it to to watch the video it's going to be pre-recorded so you can watch it at any time as well but it, also please join us for the live q a session as well yeah i know i'll be tuning in for sure even though i've already asked you plenty of questions i'm sure i can <laughs> pick up one more to uh, to send your way so now everybody make sure you go back and, and listen to ali's feedback on how to find both cliff and ali's sessions if you'd like to check it out the portal is going to be open make sure you go out and register for for Autodesk University. I know I'm excited to attend and I know that our current speakers are very excited about the project. So I've got one final question that I'd like to ask both of you before we close for the day. And I'm planning on this being a recurring question for all of the future guests. So you, you're setting the, the baseline for answers at this point. So I'm, I'm very excited to see what each of you have to say. So Cliff, what's one tool you would always have in your toolbox, no matter the circumstance? So yeah, this is great. I'm the first one, so I hope oh, I don't man. blow it. <laughs> This is a hard question. <laughs> this is like, <laughs> um, you know, it's funny. I, uh, for me, it's it, it's um it's determination. Uh, and that's that's my mm-hmm. tool, right? I think you can accomplish anything if you determine when you're focused. So I'm not sure if that's, that's how I should answer the question, but I, I, I for the a long time when I, I play sports and I you know I, you know you know got you know in the housing industry, I'm just determined to be as successful as I. I plan to be. So that's my one tool. All right. Allie, do you have an answer for us? Oh my gosh. Cliff went very theoretical and I love it. (laughs) (laughs) I'm yes. What a wonderful statement, Cliff. Nice job. Um, So this is such a hard question, but I think it's a great one, Eric. I think for me, like I always will have with me in my toolbox is my, I have a favorite type of pen. And this pen, I mean, I, there are, there are contractors and architects on the line right now saying, yep, yep, yep. They have a pen. There is a <laughs> pen. And but the reason I say that is because I could take a very literal stance here in that, like I, as much as I love technology and I am a, you know, a, a techno optimist and a, a technology translator, there is something for me that is very much about like consolidating my thoughts and organizing myself through, through the physical act of writing. And it's, and I, 
I'm, you know, there's also something I think that happens on the job site when there is just a moment where that analog world and the digital world come together. And I see it happen all the time through the act of a pen. <laughs> and, and, or, or maybe you call it a sharp or a red Sharpie, you know, that happens too. But, you know, I always have a pen with me and it is the one thing I want. There's the pen is mightier than the sword, right? You can always, it's all about sort of forming your thoughts, forming my thoughts, I should say, organizing myself so that I can, you know, bring my best thoughts, my best self, my best communication to the table so that I can always advance to the next level with, you know, my, for myself and for my colleagues. So. All right. Well, I think you guys have set the bar very oh high for future respondents. So the uh, the heat is on for future guests, which is exciting. But this has been a great conversation. And I really appreciate all the perspective from both Cliff and Allie on AU, on diversity. If anybody has any follow-up questions or would just like to connect with either of you, what's the best way to find you guys? Definitely LinkedIn. Like you can find me on LinkedIn, you know, Allison Scott on LinkedIn. I'm also on Twitter, Allison Brosco on Twitter, although I'm not there as much anymore, but yeah, come find me on LinkedIn. Happy to have a chat. Yep, exactly. And I'm a LinkedIn too as well. Uh, Cliff Cole is the best way to, to uh, research or find me. And uh, yeah, I just honestly, uh, Eric, I uh, want to thank you again for uh, allowing me the opportunity. Allison, I'm looking so forward to your keynote. Uh, uh, please, Thanks, man. <laughs> much continued success. You've, uh, be, you've been a, a leader and a mentor for all, a lot of us in the industry. So thank you very much everything for everything you do. Oh, thanks, Cliff. Yeah, Happy to have you. Cliff. No, this has been great. So everyone, thanks for taking the time to join us today on Digital Builder. If you want to reach out to me with any questions or suggestions, or would even like to be a guest on a future episode, you can also find me on LinkedIn under Eric Thomas. I'm in industry marketing here at Autodesk and just send me a message. On that final note, goodbye. You've been listening to Digital Builder. To ensure that you never miss an episode, subscribe to the show in your favorite podcast player. If you're listening with Apple Podcasts, we'd love for you to give a quick rating of the show. Simply tap the number of stars you think the podcast deserves, and then you're done. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time.